Almost a year ago, I moved back to the country from the city where I studied fashion. In this year, this slow life has taught me so many lessons already. Being this close to nature has inspired my designs and ethos so deeply. I'm constantly inspired by the changing seasons and the cycles of the land around me. I'm always adding extra tabs to my skirt to hold foraged spring flowers, extra pockets for autumn when the fruit is so abundant, or making a dress that is easy to slip off for an impromptu waterfall dip in the hot months. Mimicking the regenerative practices of our farm, I now design and create pieces entirely from recycled materials. I create from old duna covers, tablecloths that are hand embroidered but covered in stains, an old bed sheet, curtains, doilies, and scraps of material collected over the years. This dress I made from an old duna cover, avoiding the stains and using the beautiful cut lace. By reusing this piece that was no longer cherished and was destined for the dump, I was able to continue its narrative while avoiding unsustainable fabric production. I made this outfit from an old sheet. It is dedicated to being a woman in the country, a duck mum, a forager, fruit picker, builder or gardener. The belt is inspired by our dad's old tool belt that we found in the shed but it is perfectly designed for a woman's body. It has tabs for everything and anything, like duck and goat treats, collecting flowers, storing screws, or picking lemons. <laughs> this top was made from a stained hand embroidered tablecloth that I found in an op shop. Using zero waste methods, I made pieces following the shape and size of the cloth, making sure that I used almost every part of the fabric. The orchid motif is so special and echoes the nature around me, while each stitch reminds me of the unknown craftsperson who made it. In reusing the now uncherished piece, I am able to recover and honor its every stitch. When I wear it, I feel the strength of the stories that it holds. For Julia, I made this dress out of an old lace curtain with holes in it. Our grandmother was throwing it out because it had started falling apart. It's quite romantic that it hung in her house watching over her and her family for years. Now it's my sister's favourite dress and it's appreciated in a different way. I made this top from another stained but beautifully hand embroidered tablecloth using the lace as a hem with dramatic sleeves made from an old sheet. I bought it from an op shop and the lady working there was so excited that I saw its beauty. This piece would have once been made for so many hours, perfected and then admired as a decoration for even longer. It always feels wrong that these pieces were once loved so deeply, but now have been forgotten on the back of secondhand shop shelves. I love this process and I draw so much inspiration from the story that fabric tells. I cut these scraps and pieces in a way that honours the story of their previous owners, being careful not to cut a single embroidered thread and sizing the pattern pieces so that I can use most of the fabric. This way, I can continue the story of each piece, sharing the narrative with the long line of craftspeople before me. I made this top last week from scraps and tablecloths that I found in op shops. Each piece of fabric is so special, some pieces have cross-stitch embroidery, and the op shop ladies that I bought it off told me the sweet stories of embroidering the same pieces in school. By using these fabrics, I can hold the giggles of these women as they laughed and reminisced about their childhood with me. It's such a special feeling that over 50 years, these pieces have served purposes of being loved tablecloths over shared tables, and now they seem magically reworked and revived into beautiful garments. Today, Julia and I are spending a day in the studio. And of course, all of the duckies follow along in a line. I'm going to sew a skirt that matches the gingham patchwork top that I'm wearing today. First, I make a toile out of raw calico to test the pattern that I designed. Then I cut my pattern pieces from scraps of old tablecloths and sew them together.
Julia is coming along to paint a portrait of me while I sew. Whenever we spend a day in the studio, Magnolia and Moth hear us and come running down from the hill above. And they spend all day hanging out, sleeping on our feet while we create, cheekily nibbling on houseplants, and just being all round cuties. Sweet Moth always puts on a show that she doesn't want to pat, but secretly she loves pats so much. These days we spend together in the studio are really special, with lots of laughing, joking, and playing with the animals. Yeah. <laughs> Maggie always stands on the foot of the machine. Maybe she wants to be a seamstress also. I'm making a matching skirt. I have designed it to be long strips of material and with apron-like pockets. First, I pattern made this on paper, considering all that I wanted, but in 2D form. To check that all the pieces that I made line up in the way that I want them to, I'm making a toile or a first prototype. This also helps me to realize if there is anything I want to change in the design. I always plan my designs to use these small sections of fabric so that I can avoid waste. I am also inspired by our own personal history. Our grandmother was a sewer who also lived and worked on the farm. Our dad always told stories of school where, because he was the youngest of six kids, he always got the scrappiest hand-me-downs. He was also the tallest and was always growing, so his mum would add a new layer to the bottom of his jeans every time he grew too much. Once he finally grew out of a pair of jeans, they would have so many strips of different denim. Now, with the threat of the climate crisis and trying to do everything we can to leave behind a better world, I am so inspired by these stories of using what you already have to create new things. I like the amount of flair and the balance between the strips of fabric, but I've decided to change the pockets a little. <laughs> By my side, Julia is painting. Julia is painting a picture of a photo she took of me. It's always so nice to work next to each other, watching each of us create and getting inspired by our shared work. Right now, my work is heavily inspired by patchwork. I'm inspired by its reoccurrences throughout history around the world. In ancient Egypt, the Louis Song dynasty, the Great Depression, or the 70s. Patchwork in history was often born from necessity. Blankets were made from scraps of clothing when you couldn't afford to buy new material. Now, I believe that we have to be so careful of overconsumption, and patchwork allows me to use every scrap of material. Now I'm going to cut all the fabric. Because the pattern pieces are quite small and thin, it's easy to use scraps of fabric. It also makes less waste because you can fit them in all so closely. The fashion industry produces 10% of global carbon dioxide emissions every year and is one of the most polluting industries behind fuel and agriculture. In this unsustainable world of fashion, so many steps need to be taken within the industry. While we wait for those with the power within the industry to change, individually doing better helps. Oh, no, Mom. Off the skirt. No. No, no. No. No, 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 no. Mom no, 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 no. always no, 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 causes no, chaos, like standing on all of my things.
Now I'm adding binding to the sides. Almost finished. 
Moth is the best model ever. She loves getting all dressed up. Magnolia always nibbles on all of the house plants. At the end of the day, Scout and Mama Duck always come wandering up from the dam, where they often escape to and relax for the day. These naughty ducks spend their days wandering around the farm and visiting us wherever we are. Like dogs, ducks wag their tails when they are happy or excited. All done. It feels so special to wear something that holds so many stories. Something that I made with my own hands from fabrics with a sustainable past. Knowing every seam and every stitch makes me feel so connected to the clothing. Yum, starfruit.
Thank you for watching. We are so grateful for all of your support. Lots of love from Julia, Anastasia, mum who films everything, and of course, all of the animals.